guys can get a little closer. Hey guys! Real fast, real fast. So I know some people are new. So and Julie and I clearly missed a meeting this morning, so if you're brand new with, you know. When when he says uh, for the man or for the person bringing us home, bring, bringing it home meaning like after this we're going on a break. That's why. Um, that's what it means. And, and yeah, I used to work at Whataburger. I'm Richard. If, you, if I haven't met you, I'm from Rich, I'm from Spain originally, and I did work. I did get this job actually first. <laughs> I got this job first, and I was making really good money, about eight dollars an hour. 800 bi-weekly. It was good money in 2017, 16. Not as bad as today. And um, I read a review from this job. By the way, don't trust reviews. Only people, people only post negative things. Uh, sometimes people post positive. But you ever go to like a McDonald's, get a couple good burgers, and immediately leave and put a good review? No. No, no right? <laughs> but what if they treat you bad? Right. Right. Huh. Susie. Sucked. <laughs> Isn't it kind of true? Like we are more like the internet's a little bit more filled up with, with negative things. Some people do put positives, but very rarely. Anyway, so I looked at a review. Mistake. You know, you shouldn't trust. Um, Ooh, like that. that sounds very chaotic. Savannah, saw you. <laughs> <laughs> I did. It was a mistake, and that's why I worked at Whataburger. But I I trusted a stranger on the internet, which makes no sense. Uh, versus trusting. Chang, who was the owner of the company where I first started in San Antonio, Texas. Um, I read a review that probably for some loser that said, uh, be careful with this job. You work a lot and the owner doesn't like people having second jobs. So I was like, ooh. But I liked the job. I wanted to stay, but I also wanted to get another job to make extra money. I also That's also stupid, by the way, if you're thinking of that. I'm not saying not to do it, but I would love to give you perspective. Then, then you can make a decision with maybe more perspective. But anyway, I went to get a second job because Whataburger, it's easy because you can pick whatever schedule because it's 24-7. Anybody love, anybody love Whataburger 24-7? Yeah. Yeah. 247? Yeah. And I took a job there from 9 p.m. to 1 in the morning for about five nights a week so I could make an extra $100 a week so I could make 400 bucks a month so I could pay my car note. And then I just, that, then that was fine. That way I could just use this job. Even my checks were very low at the beginning because I kind of sucked. Um, base pays were not good enough for me kind of suck but I was able to live my car payment was the only thing that was expensive because I was paying 26% interest on my car because I'm originally from Spain I came here when I was already 22 the reason I got 26% interest is because no credit is worse than bad credit did you know that so I had no credit because I just came to the US so they told me yeah you can get this car if you don't have money for it just charge you some interest I'm like cool 26% Dante sounded pretty good to me. I was like, 26%. I thought it was going to be 60 or 70. Then I realized I got scammed. I didn't realize it about five years later. So. Anyway, so that's me. My name is Richard, and I'm originally from Spain. Anybody been to Spain? No. Well, that's yeah. 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 You've been, Kinza? What us. part? Um, Madrid and Barcelona. Okay, which one did you like better? Um, I was in Barcelona longer, but I... I like both. Like, it's okay to like. No, pick one. I, I live in Madrid. <laughs> I've always had rival, rivalry towards Barcelona teams. I know that. Like, they hate. They do hate stuff, but I've matured past that part, so I actually love Barcelona. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, which one? Did you enjoy Barcelona more? More more beach time, maybe? Yeah, and like, I feel like the. Yeah, like the accent. I don't know. I, yeah, I think I like Barcelona a little bit better. <laughs> Barcelona, Spain is great. Yeah. <laughs> you'll, 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 if you're like in the going out stage, uh, like college stage, you'll like have beers and, 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 and stuff, kind of like what they do here, until about seven, eight o'clock at night with a little bit of food. Then you'll go wherever you, you're staying at, to what hotel, dorm, whatever, to actually shower uh, and dinner. And then around 11 or 12, you'll go out to go purchase whatever um, liquids that you consume to numb yourself from reality or or alcohol. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so, and then, and then around midnight or so, and then you'll take these liquids closer to the place where you're gonna spend at until seven in the morning, and you'll consume all of this probably outside, because you can't bring it inside. You'll consume it outside, probably in the beach. 
and then when it's about three in the morning and you've completely lost sense of time, uh, you'll go inside of this, uh, uh, inside of whatever the club, and then you'll dance there probably until six, seven in the morning, and then you'll grab some pizza or some nasty food on the way out, and when it's like the sun is totally hitting you and you totally forgive yourself for your life, <laughs> you'll arrive home and sleep until 4 p.m. and repeat. <laughs> it's fun if you got no responsibilities, children, or anything to do with like an ordered life. So I did that for a few years, and you know, definitely adds some some years to you. Okay, no, so uh, that was, that's me. I want to talk to you. Is it okay to talk to you guys about some things? Yeah. Okay, so anybody, and, and look, I, I've never ran this meeting, so even for the veterans, you, it'll be the first time you hear it. Um, it's an old school meeting, but it also it kind of helps explain what we do a little in an easier way. Let's say you go home and you're like, and your mom's like, what are you, what are you doing? Like, what, Newburn was that, never heard of it. I'd rather you go work for Starbucks or I'd rather you go whatever. Um, so I'm going to explain to you guys what we do. What does it say here? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I thought, it was, I thought it was John's uh, company name, like that. We scanned, we scanned John into, into making uh, six figures before the year ends. He's, he's extremely pissed. Anyway, uh, so the reason why we do what we do and how we do it is because of um, the, the way we approach the consumer. And the way we do marketing, which you're like wondering, why do we have to practice pits like this? It's a little weird, there's energy. Because energy is a big part of one-on-one -on -one interaction. You ever talk to somebody that was a little boring, you didn't really want to buy anything? Yeah. But did you ever want to buy something that you've ever, maybe really didn't need, but like it was advertised really cool? Yeah. But somebody like had a good pitch or something and you were like, what is it? And you kind of like it already, but you might not need it. Like for dudes, you're like, I kind of like that skincare. I've never used it. Right? <laughs> it sounds good. You know, I don't know. Any, we're going to talk about direct versus indirect marketing. And we do direct marketing, direct sales, but basically a difference. Anybody actually know the difference? Anybody can explain a proper difference? No, no, no wrong answer. Do you want to try? So direct is person to person, indirect would be like not the human connection over the in website, cold call. Really, that's actually very accurate and there's even more specifics to that, but that's that's good. TP, you want to say something? Um, direct is directly towards one person, indirect is for a large amount of people. Mm -hmm. More direct, yeah, yeah. More of an example is direct is for sales to sale, indirect would be a billboard on a highway, something like that, something that feels more to the masses. That applies, that applies, that applies. Lots of hands up. Um, uh, Devin? Uh, so like direct is like, I'm bringing the product to you. And indirect would be like you getting a flyer at your door and hopefully you get the service. So those are all proper examples, okay? In order to this, you wanna? Oh yeah, so I was talking with someone before and he explained to me that indirect, maybe a lot of people see it, but not too much people, they pick up the stuff. It's, it's more effective to get profit from direct because you can confess uh, the customer about what you want because you have the product. Cool. Somebody get a diploma? <laughs> yes, that's great. We've heard so. Direct is um, like person to person, so you can learn about that person specifically and actually sell to that, or like talk about the product to that person and figure out why it's good for them. Versus indirect, you kind of just hope that the person comes to the conclusions for themselves why they need it. With direct, you actually can explain why the person needs it. Person to person. Cool. All right, D. Uh, so direct is me directly telling you how the excess made my stomach feel, and indirectly is me telling Tommy how it made my stomach feel, and he come to tell you about it. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's not wrong. It's not wrong. That makes sense. Not, he's not wrong. Raise your hand if you're the upline for this man. Who's upline? Who's upline for this man? Where are you, G? You too, bro. Raise your hand. <laughs> uh -uh, John. <laughs> He's justifying why it's okay for him to go to the bathroom in the middle of 
practice, <laughs> which I call them out on, and that's not what. I'm... <laughs> this is indirect marketing. So I'm telling you guys <laughs> that, that sucks, and that's not a good team player. <laughs> what I did in the hallway is what is it's very direct. <laughs> yes, all your answers are good, and very specifically, all of you guys that said this is one on one. Mm -hmm. well, somebody said person to person. Yes, but it could be cold calling. Like it could be again. The whole point is this is let's. This is one to one, okay? One to, like, me to you. It could be on the phone. A lot of, what we do is person to person, but it could be on the phone. It could also be on an email, direct marketing via email. Maybe less effective, but it, it is definitely one to one. And this is one to many. So that's a, a quick way to maybe explain it, okay? Some of you said, hey, getting a product from me to you. Yes, but, but also you're forgetting services. How many things are, things we purchase today that are services, they're not products, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you, none of you guys, I'm, the phone people are carrying products, but the water and frontier, we're not carrying stuff, right? We're carrying our face to sell a service, but not, that makes sense? So anyway, um, just to give you guys some stats, okay? And again, this should, it, maybe it helps explain it, because the reason we do this, because why would we not have a call center of all of us calling people to sell stuff for Nestle, or for Frontier, or for, here's why, okay? Direct marketing is 10% effective. And indirect marketing is about 3% effective. Mm. I'm not saying better or worse, just talking about efficiency, right? What creates more profit based on somebody who was talking about profit? Well, it depends, right? If you talk to 100 people directly, profit says you'll make how much profit? Ten. Well, if you talk to 2 million, how much profit do you make? 3%. About 60,000, it's 3% of 2 million, right? So who made more money? Right. Indirect. So it's, it's not, again, profit is going to depend on volume, mm -hmm. which is why, do we ever do like five doors a day? No. No, because you damn sure believe if we could, is that what we would do? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you last two doors? Damn straight. Yeah, but we don't, right? Why, because there's always a certain, we all agree for marketing, and by the way, Marketing, anybody want to describe, anybody can difference marketing and sales? Ooh, it's, it's not really, I mean, what does, yeah, go ahead. I want to say marketing is like even telling you what the product is about, advertising and showing you why it's good, <coughs> why you should buy it. Sales is more like, it's a sales. <laughs> like, I'm trying to get your money. Marketing, I'm not trying to get your money. Sales. Sales. And some people want to difference it so much. Like, I've heard people saying stuff like, I don't want to do, I'm, I'm here for marketing, not for sales. It's like, okay, wait a minute. That's like saying like, you came to the doctor, but you're not here to, to get good. You're here to, you know I mean? Like it's, it doesn't make any sense, okay? Marketing is a process of the sale. Yeah. Marketing is part of a pro, what's the point of marketing if, you're, if there's not sales? You know what I mean? Do you believe there could be like the best marketing campaign ever that sold the zero dollar? No, right? So if it's good marketing, is it gonna equal in what? Sales. So what is, the way I would describe it is, hey, sales is the result of great marketing. Marketing is the process of a sale. That makes sense? Now, if we're doing direct marketing, you're the, you're the marketing. That makes sense? Why? And, and by the way, if you're like, why are these people so excited on their first day? If you're here on your first day, why are these people yelling and screaming? And she's laughing back there. Like, well, the reason why is because if we're going person to person, who's the marketing? You. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Before they know what the service is, what do they see? You. you. Your face. Which is why we train enthusiasm, happiness, and smiling. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Like, hey, yeah. I'm, I'm asking, I'm training people to be in management. Like, you know, the first, as silly as it sounds, first thing you got to train is your face. It's true. You have to be able to smile and have a, it, it's part of discipline. You have to have an enthusiastic attitude, even if your day's not going pretty cool. If you're immature, you're probably letting your emotions and your crappy day or even the weather affect your smile. But you shouldn't if your smile it means it's your job. You know what I mean? Like if you work behind a, a, a screen and nobody saw you ever, your smile doesn't matter. Does that make sense? But here, that's why we train that because you are a part of the marketing. So it's kind of important that you show your teeth and that you're smiling. And like, <laughs> it's very hard to be a dick to a very nice person. You know what I mean? It's extreme. And could you do it? Yes. But it's very hard to, for Greg to show up with that beautiful smile. Show us your smile, Greg. Oh. 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 
<laughs> it's very hard for, for us to open the door to Greg and like treat him nasty when he's like, hi. <laughs> Which is why we train, is, that, is this making sense? Yes. Okay, so now I'm gonna go a little bit faster. So uh, there's three reasons, okay? Three reasons why, and this is for you guys to also know and educate people on, or whoever it is, this is why we do what we do versus doing calls or for us getting together with tables and calling like Indian people, sorry, no offense, no. Um, to, uh, like, to call in millions of people a day, the reason why, I just had a bad experience with an Indian call center. <laughs> <laughs> like they keep getting my number, I'm like, bro. Anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> I should have not said that. You guys forgive me? Yeah. yeah. Ignore that and uh, you're gonna learn, you're gonna learn something. Okay. So that's three reasons. If you're gonna write them down, and again, like it, it helped me explain to my mom who lives in Spain. My mom said, "Why you? Why do you have a degree and you're doing this job? Where you, I was advertising suits, men's suits in Costco. That was my experience in the field my first day. And like you might sound like, does anybody think that's cool? Yep. I thought it was cool. It was Ralph Lauren suits. That was our yeah. client. Yeah. Ralph Lauren suits. Ralph. Ralph. But in Costco, I was yeah. like, you go to Costco for a suit. You know what I mean? No one does. Dude, we happened to do pretty well. We did like three, four thousand dollars a day. The only thing is, the commissions were like six percent. So I was like, we sold a lot, and then the check was like 150 bucks. Oh no! no. no. Like, yeah. Yeah. Who, made, who made a lot of money here? Not me. Gotcha. Okay. Anyway. Direct marketing is way more effective, okay? And I remember explaining this to my mom. For me, it helped. I really care for my mom's, uh, I did used to care for what my mom thought of my career. I care less now, because I don't want, I wouldn't trade, is it small tip? Is, hey, unless you would trade careers with somebody that, like mom, dad, or even a spouse, unless you would trade careers, you really shouldn't care their opinion. But they will have free and unsolicited and unlimited opinions towards what you do. Sure. So for me, this helped a lot to like, hey mom, this is what we do, and it bought me about two hours of her patience, you know? Mm -hmm. Not much, but I was like, mom, here's what, what we do is more effective than me working for some magazine. I actually believe it, and it's true. Data can back it up. So the first reason why direct marketing is more effective than indirect marketing is convenience. Convenience, okay? And, and I'm gonna ask you guys a quick question, right? Like, when is the last time, well, indirect marketing could be like a one to many, right? So a billboard, some of you guys said examples, TV commercials, these are all uh, indirect marketing, right? When is the last time you personally remember driving by a billboard and you pulled over and you wrote down whatever was on the billboard to make it a point to actually purchase that? Never. No. Never. Never. You Never. don't. <laughs> Even on Instagram, anybody's bought something through Instagram? I have. I have. But, but what is that, when is the last time you remember like, I gotta go buy that from Instagram? No. If you do, isn't it like, if you do buy it from Instagram, is it like an impulsive purchase? Yes. Yeah. Like, you buy it, buy now, you click, you, you get through the whole thing, you're like, yeah. You're already on this. <laughs> right? Or you get on Or on a You get, you grab Greg's phone, you put your address for delivery. <laughs> but does that make sense? Yeah. Convenience, right? Like, the, the pleasure of direct marketing is, look, Greg with his beautiful smile, or hey, Miss Rachel here at the front will show up uh, at your home and give you this water service. Did you need it? Maybe, maybe not, doesn't matter. Point is, you can get it right here and there, and you probably have some discounts and offers that are limited, and now you're scared to miss out on, but you have the service here in front of you. So it's a lot more convenient than, do you think it would work if we texted 150 people? How many doors we do, 120, let's say on average? Let's say we do 120 doors per person for on average. Think it would be effective if we texted 120 people per day with the link to sign up for the water? No. You think you'd get like seven no. or eight sales a day? No. 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 Might get 3%, but then we would have to work so much harder, really. Okay? So the first thing is convenience. Um, think about how many times indirect marketing makes you stop your car, pull up. It doesn't happen too often. We're here, it's like, on convenience, like, like I said, you might somebody might show up and you might not need it, but now after listening to Rachel, you might be like, let me try it. Anybody ever bought something they didn't need? Yes. Every hand should be up. <laughs> you're all wearing stuff you don't really need, right? But you wanted it, so you bought it, right? Number two, 
It's target audience. So, anybody anybody know how much a commercial cost? Millions of dollars. When? Depends on the time or the channel or whatever, but like, yeah, for an NFL, uh, middle of the Super Bowl type, it could cost millions, all right? Okay? So think about the target audience. Think about, okay. Plus the budget. Think about indirect marketing. Like, they have to come up with all of these things where we, we have a little bit of an easier time, but think about the target audience for an indirect commercial, right? Like, if they're putting a TV commercial at 1 p.m. on a Tuesday, like today, right now, like, what commercials are on TV right now? Like, who's watching TV right now? Home, moms, stay at home, moms. Either, either broke. Yeah, because if people are like millionaires and they don't work, but they're probably not watching TV, right? So it's either broke people, retired, very old, maybe children, maybe babysitters with children, third shift people sometimes, maybe? Yeah. There's kids, sleep. There's kids sleep. Sleep. Okay, so like, would you put a, would you, would you advertise? What would you advertise? What commercial would you put there? Eminem. Snuggy. Social security. Yeah, social security commercials. Toys. Right. Okay. It's Friday night. Yes. Point being. Hey guys. Hey what? Point being is, would you would you change the type of commercial if it was Friday night? Yeah, yeah. yeah. you would, right? That's the whole point. Versus when you're talking to someone, direct marketing, when you're talking to one person, you just basically, if you ask, if you guys know how we do the field, you ask a few questions, you end up finding out what does this person click on. Like you're, all of you should be able to have a pitch that the pitch. There's a script, and we use a script really just so for for massive duplication purposes. But really. You're supposed to talk to somebody for five, 10 minutes or let maybe, maybe three minutes and find out if they're your customer or not. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Most of the times they're not. 90% of the times they're not. 10% they are. So you should have some sort of pitch that you realize in the first 100 to 200 seconds, is this the customer or not? That's yeah, it. Like right. you got to realize when you go to the field, it's so hard sometimes if you lose your attitude because you got to realize that the job is already done. You just have to walk it through. There's gonna be 10% of people out there today. Out of your 40 talk to's, you're supposed to get at least four people to say yes. And and I'm talking about upgrades, I'm talking about selling, right? And free phones would, wouldn't categorize there because it's free. But but when it comes to selling water, frontier, anything like that, you should be getting about 10% of people that you actually talk to, which is why we aim for 40 talk to's because four a day is very profitable. And you should be getting 10%. And you, get, you need to realize like by the time you get to the door, there's something you can do to help somebody get excited about what you have. There's a little bit of that, but the card's already flipped. You've got to flip the card. Is it a yes or a no? The card's already flipped. Like, sorry, the, the, the card is already there. It's either red or black, but you just got to flip it. Does that make sense? Yeah. You can't turn a no into a yes. And when people lose their attitude in the field, it's because they confuse the target audience and they think they, everyone has to buy. Yeah. And you get frustrated with those because you realize, like, oh man, I lost that sale. No, you didn't lose it. Like the sale was not going to be a sale before you got there. Mm -hmm. yeah. You just try to turn a person that is allergic to oranges to buy freaking oranges, yeah. and that does it. That's that's painful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So target audience. And the third reason is the expense. Okay, and we just kind of touched on it. Commercial. How much could it cost? between thousands to millions of dollars. Would you agree? Yeah. Now, how much do you think it costs Frontier to, to get all these sales that we make for them? Thousands. Zero. They actually don't, they actually don't lose it. Correct. Somebody there knows how it works. Like, they actually don't pay us until we make the sale. So how much does it cost them? Nothing. It's free. It's actually zero dollars. Nothing until they make money. Exactly. They have, because we take care of the training. This is where the middleman, this is where this business of franchising is so powerful. Why? Because if I'm Frontier, I find Uber and I'm like, okay, you guys make sales. If you make some sales, we'll pay you. Do you know that when we sign up a customer for Frontier, Frontier on the lifetime of that customer makes $4,500? Because, I mean, how many of you guys were thinking about canceling your internet last month? One person, two, okay? But do most people are like thinking every month, I'm like, I'm canceling my internet and switching? No. No, no, dude, whether you're broke or not, when you get your internet, your internet, you're most likely keeping it unless they really piss you off with some really bad service. Would you agree? Yeah. Yeah. So we signed up somebody for Frontier and they're staying at least until they pay, 50, is it 50 a month that they pay? 60, depends on the gig. 
So they pay 60 a month until, so if you divide this by 60, it'll tell you how long typically an average customer stays with Frontier, a lot of months. They pay us $245. Out of which, Lydia's a level two, now she makes 140. Our office for expenses, profits, we keep the rest. So we keep, we keep about uh, the same amount, right? Or 105, a little bit less than what we give her. She makes If she makes two of these a day, she's making 60 grand a year outside of base pay, just on commissions. And we also get paid in this, et cetera. And now Frontier did not have this customer. They paid zero dollars, but they made 4,500 minus 245. Yeah. Who's getting a great deal here? Uh, Frontier. Frontier. Frontier's getting a great deal. How much did they pay for our commercial? AKA, the commercial is Lydia. Zero. 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 Now, we trained Lydia here to smile. We gave her a pen. We invested in her face. In her, <laughs> in her, you had in her to hire her. We had to advertise to hire her. So we had to spend money to find her, to train her, to make her like us. So now she can train, <laughs> what's your name? Rawa. Rawa, and, and create a duplication of that. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Expense is zero. Zero compared to, depends on where you're advertising. That's why we do this route, because here's the thing. For the company, maybe if you own Frontier, you can do a combination of both. Frontier has billboards, you guys see them? Yeah. yeah. They have billboards, and they do both. But if you're on our side, and you're like me, and you're like, I'm not gonna own Frontier, bro. Let's be realistic in this life, okay? I might do something else, but I'm not gonna own Starbucks. Anybody think they're gonna own Starbucks? Maybe you do. I'm not gonna own Starbucks, I'm just gonna work. I'm looking at this, I'm like, I can make a lot more profit here because they're using me. To, to, it's costing them zero, which means they're very interested. They're never gonna drop us. You think Frontier will drop the billboard or us first? <laughs> it cost them nothing for, uh, to drop us. They, we have a Frontier guy that comes here every month or so and brings us Buffalo Wild Wings. And that, we're, we're cool with that, we love it. <laughs> that's, how much, it that's literally how much we cost them. You know what I mean? But isn't that cool? So, target audience um, and, and expense. And look, I'll, I was gonna give you some stats about, look, Think about the reach, okay? A billboard can reach millions of people indirectly. Would you agree? Yeah. yeah. But think about what we do. Would you say $120 is a, is a good average number? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's just do our office. Not to mention we just opened 25, 30 offices. But if we do 120 potential customers that we see in a day, and not even counting second lap, just do one lap, times 60 people that are in here, times six days a week, we're, we're potentially reaching 43,200 people a week. You realize? All of us, we're talking to 43,000, not talking, because not all of them are talked to, but we are reaching 43,200 people a week. Yeah. Just us, can you imagine if we train John to do the same in another city, you think they're gonna pay us? Yeah. It's so, 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 so effective. And again, this could be more profitable, remember, if you have a billboard in front of seven million people versus just you talking to seven people, that's winning, see, volume is important. But the margin is from zero to unlimited mm -hmm. versus the billboard or a commercial could take you, the margin is a lot smaller. Does, that make, does this make sense mathematically? Yes. 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 It's just so much more effective. And, and let's do, I did the math per year. This equals 2,246,400 a year. We are approaching 2,246,400 homes a year. If we don't grow. That's are we growing, by the way? Yes. 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 What do you multiply? So is the number, number probably bigger? What's that? What do you multiply in the This times so 52 like, weeks a year. 2,246,000. Put it 2 million. You think we're going to sell something if we're, if we're trying 2 million times a year? Yeah. Yes. yes. We actually got... Look, and think about the math. Tommy said it yesterday. If we did on average about 43,000 homes last week, what's 10% of that? I don't know. 4,300. So let's say we're let's say let's say we're opening. Let's say it's about one out of every four people we actually talk to. Let's do the math, okay? I didn't do this math in my paper, so because this is not people we talk to. Would you agree? Yeah. yeah. So what's this divided by four? Let's say 25% of the time that we approach a home, we actually have a conversation. What's that divided by four? 1,075. It's about 10,000? 1,080. Okay. How many sales are we supposed to get? 
If we do it right, how many cells are we supposed to get? 10%. 10 of that is how much? About 1,000 sales a week. How many sales did we do last week? Mm -hmm. Realize? Isn't that funny? Yeah. We did 1,300. We probably knocked a little bit more than that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but the, you see, it's like if we break it down, it's like it does make sense. So yeah. when you're in the field, don't be frustrated with like, did they get it? Did they not? Like, it's, it's only a numbers thing. The customer is meant to be for the product, yes or no. Now, you do have to remain consistent. Do billboards change every two minutes when no. somebody doesn't purchase what's on the billboard? No. 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 Should I change when 70, 76 people tell me no back back? No. No, I should be remaining happy because I'm marketing. Hi, how you doing today? Yeah. I'm selling your water. I want it. Sure. Let me see your phone. <laughs> and I'm rebuttaling. And I'm doing the pitch. And there is a part of skill. There is a part of talent. But dude, you just got to get to a point when you go through this program where you're overseeing 43,000 doors a week, you're, you're gonna sell a thousand. Like, okay, give it, it might be between 8% and 15, but does everybody understand that? Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I think it's super powerful. And I remember explaining this to my mom, and mom's like, oh wow, this newborn little thing that nobody's heard of is approaching two million customers a year. That sounds serious. Yeah. But if you don't know this, here was my response to my mom the first entire month until I saw this. I would tell my mom, mom, leave me alone. I'm gonna make a hundred grand. Yeah. <laughs> and my mom, who knows me, is like, mm, you've never been able to properly pick up your room. <laughs> Nobody's gonna pay you a hundred grand. And I was like, ah. <laughs> well, your job sucks. <laughs> and I would end up in a frustrating battle with somebody that loves me, which would make me doubt the job, as dumb as that sounds. Yeah. That's what I would end up doing, so I'm just, protecting you in case you're in the similar position that I am. Does that make sense? Yes. So you have to learn to master this. And when you understand this, the first thing that happens is you will stop losing your attitude. And you'll and, and when you understand our business, the field becomes easy. Why? Because you know if you're okay working hard, you have to be okay like actually working hard where no one's watching you. But you'll relax more in the field. You'll normally get the results at the end of the week. You'll be fine. You'll be considered accurate in, in between these numbers because you're going out there and when you're getting all the no's, you're realizing that you have to react the same amount that the billboard reacts to the no's. Mm -hmm. Which is how much? Zero. 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 Your reaction should be zero. Is it difficult? Yeah, because we're emotional beings and it's hard and sometimes you're like, like me, you're like looking, staring at the lady that took seven hours to get up to her third floor with the case of bottles and she needs you. She still says no. Maybe. No sense. <laughs> At all. At all, right? Zero sense. Or when you're on Frontier and you're telling them, pull up the speed test and we're it's trying, we're gonna, and, and you know you're gonna give them a lower bill and higher speed and they, their phone doesn't even open the internet because their internet sucks. <laughs> and then they end up telling you, I don't need it, and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> and the phone's gotta be even more frustrating because you guys are dropping off things for free where somebody's like, the only reason that you're at their house is because they're broke, would you agree? Yes. <laughs> yes. And they're telling you, I don't need it, and you're like, God bless you, bro. The only reason they sent me here is because you need me! <laughs> Give me your ID! Give me your ID, they're like, I can't afford one! It's $11 at the DMV. And look, it is, it is awesome, the phone program we do, by the way, I keep getting like, Yesterday, last week, the fact that we helped 800 people eliminate their phone bill, bro, yeah. times, think about that times, that's about 40,000 people a year, just us, that we are saving 60 bucks a month. If you added all those 60 bucks a month times 800 a week times a year, how many thousands of dollars are we saving? You know, normal working class people that could, you know? By the way, some of these phones are cool. Sheridan sold uh, my wife a phone. She doesn't qualify, she, she qualifies because she doesn't have a job, so it's kind of, Got <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. That's great. That's, that's pretty cool. Sheridan got how much you get paid on that? Fifty bucks. Fifty bucks. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's pretty happy about that. And the phone's pretty cool. I'm like, yeah. If, no, it, was, if it had some IOS in there, it would be. IOS. IOS. With a hair on the back. <laughs> no, I, that was, that was not so anyway, and, and I'm gonna finish the meeting by telling you like, hey look, some of you, some of you really have a hard time grasping this. If you just looked at the bigger scale and noticed that 
you're just a part of a billboard that has to reach X amount of numbers. And some of you get really tossed into the emotional side of like, I'm not good at that. You're not supposed to be good at it. You're supposed to do X amount of work. You're supposed to walk X amount of miles. If you walk X amount of miles and run X amount of exercise, you're gonna lose this amount of pounds based on your weight and on your food intake. Does that make sense? There's no secret to it. It's just hard to prove the more specific and granular you get. It's very hard to prove. But if you just realize the moment you analyze an entire week worth of thousands of dollars, it come, kind of comes out to like the 10%. We're not even better than anyone. We're about 10%. You might think our office is better. It's not better. We just do a lot of volume, a lot of doors. If we have only four of us here, we'll be doing 100 doors a day. So we're probably doing four or five, six a day. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you got, you got to master this and you got to be, you got to understand this. And when you understand this, two steps. First is you understand it and you apply it to yourself. It means you get to level one leadership. If you're kind of lucky, you'll get to level two just with that. Now, when you're level two, now you realize yeah, because you can get to level two by training one person that you really kind of got lucky, hired a great person, they understand it right away, so now you're like a one-legged, like a flamingo level two. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've been there, you're a little flamingo, anybody know what I mean by that? Like yeah. little, little flamingos, like you train your one person and you, you get your pin and that's fine. But it's flamingo, we don't recommend it. We recommend more legs, six legs. Um, <laughs> six legs, Spider-Man, yes. Uh, and then and when, when you're able to duplicate that, and you're able to apply that to a massive skill, you're able to remove the emotion, is when you'll get closer to mastermind and system manager, which is why today I'd like to welcome officially Mr. Alejandro. <laughs> shout out because you know he, he he was like like half a bullet point from qualifying for for assistant manager by the time John is upline got promoted to assistant manager sometimes that happens where like you just right there with your upline it's a fantastic battle and it and it's great and um, it's almost like you catch your upline and it, it's a it's a weird feeling between between like got to be humble because it's my upline and, and, and pride because you, you know you can do it too and it's it's a, it's a really thing it's really really hard to manage like it takes a humble man or, or lady to, to do that. And Alejandro did a really good job with that. He was never uh, jealous. He was never envious of John. He was always respectful, even though he knows he's just as talented, you know. Um, so we sent him out on a trip. We said, hey, you know, if you can go to San Francisco and, you know, he helped us open that office. He hired, I'm gonna keep it. <laughs> he hired the first uh, first interview we did in San Francisco in Avon's company. His name was Garrett. The guy was the first leader. They got promoted up there. Then Alejandro went back after three weeks with uh, D, which is a, a level two, a second generation level two leader for Alejandro. Then my dog. <laughs> and, uh, and he went there. The, the company had six leaders. There's ten by the time he left in two weeks, and that's just the impact he had. And obviously, D as well. That's the impact they had in two weeks. Plus, there's hundreds of people, not hundreds, but there's 
about five or ten other people pushing for leadership out there. The office just completely blew up. And you can look at it and say, well, was it Amon and Sarah alone? Or did they definitely get some help? Um, and so I just look at, just so you guys know, the way we look at it is he's finishing the program. He's getting promoted to open his office. And he, he proved to us in here that he could go to another office that's currently operating after eight months ago that you started or something like that. Eight months ago, he was in orientation like you. And what's that? Uh, 30 weeks later, he's now promoted to, he went to another office, fixed it, doubled the leader headcount almost in two weeks. Uh, both the girls just received the $20,000 bonus um, because of the work he did out there. And now he gets the, obviously he gets promoted. Do you think he'll run a good office? Yeah! yeah. I can even lie, I remember when um, Tracy and Alante got promoted, that was the first people I saw promoted. Um, they were, I, I, just, I was like, oh, I just need a job. I didn't even really care. I was like, oh, they finished the training. I don't know what that means. Um, but um, I never thought I could get here, honestly. I, I've just been here. Everybody asked me, when are you going to promote? I don't know. When I get promoted. I just kind of hit the checklist, do what I need to do, and just do it. Um, I'm really thankful for Richard and Tommy. Um, they, they really helped me throughout the whole, the whole journey. Um, same thing for John. And Genesis, dude, Genesis has been there the entire way. Um, same thing for DT. Uh, everybody on Team Romantic, all these dogs from Animal Center. Um, yeah. Richard, dude, I'm telling you, I've called Richard like a hundred times. I think he's definitely tired of calling me. <laughs> I called him like at night. I'm like, hey, what's up, Richard? He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, I just say hi. <laughs> he's like, he's like, with his kid. And I'm just like, what's up, bro? How you doing? Um, but John, dude, this, this man, man, I've been with John for the whole time. Like, me and John have been through everything. He's helped me so much. Um, I really, I really like to thank John. He, he actually, I, I've been wanting to move out of my mom's house when I first came in. Um, because like the home situation was. It was toxic. My stepdad was just a dick at. I mean, uh, <clears throat> I think you know he was, he was, it was not a good place. It was super toxic. So I, just, I really wanted to get out. So I was really thankful for John to reach out. He was like, "Hey, dude, you know Wade is moving out. Do you want to come in?" Super so thankful for that because then I got to associate with my upline. So I, I got to be with somebody who's definitely way better than me. So I definitely, I definitely got to see that experience. That and um, like, I, like my whole goal is just to retire my mom. Like. The other day, I, I called her and then she's like, she's going to, she's doing school, because in Puerto Rico she had my brother when she was like 19, 20ish kind of, so she couldn't finish school, um, and she was kind of like an architect, but then when you come to the U.S. you can't be an architect if you don't have a degree, so then she came to the U.S. and she was working at Home Depot, like Home Depot, making twelve dollars an hour with three kids, you know, that sucks, and then my my parents divorced, so then my dad left, I mean I, I love my dad, my dad was still here, you know, good, but um, my mom was still struggling. Um, she was trying to support three kids with a $12 an hour lead pay. Like what? Like, it was crazy. And I was really thankful for my mom. And like I called her the other day. She was like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to school. You know, I'm working. She's, she's doing her employee stuff. And then she, uh, and then I called her. She's like, she's like, yeah, I'm, I'm about to go do DoorDash. It's fucking Saturday, though. You think I want my mom to do fucking DoorDash? Dude, it was that. I was like, I need to finish this. I need to finish this. I want to I I put my mom in payroll. I want to help her out so much. And um, I'm just super thankful because everybody here was able to help me out. And, um, I really want to thank you, Richard. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So, your boy, uh, we already have the whole plan, but you know, his first day, can I, can I say your first day so that way you know? I don't even know. So his, <laughs> his first day of sales, in, officially under his own company, will be June 5th in Charlotte, North Carolina. Around June last year. It was May 25th, bro. May 20th. No, but I left for like a year. And then yeah, took six vacations to start yeah, off. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> I, got, dude, I was the worst starting off. Like, I think these dudes, I think it was a launch here. I think it was Ami that told me. They had a meeting. They were like, does this kid even want the job? I, I left. My first, my first week, I was like, yeah. I gotta go, guys. I got like a wedding to go to. Uh, I'll be out. Here's my schedule. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can you guys work around here? Can you guys work? Can I, can I come back? You didn't even ask. <laughs> I, I really thought, like, hey, I got to go to Grace. Yeah, yeah. yeah I did. And, uh, yeah, it was good, man. Well, that's pretty cool. Um, you guys think the business works? 
Yes. Yes. I think so too. I mean, he's 19. Like, you yeah. should be kind of, you should, you should be happy and low-key pissed. Like, dude, this thing looks so cool. Is it? Is this? Is there anything in that box though? Then you check. It's not a scam. It's a scam. That's so, how they're so confident. Um, anyway, we're, hey, we're gonna go. We're gonna go to break. But if, if you don't mind, um, <clears throat> before we do that, to line up against this um, and do a, a quick big picture, and then uh, we'll we'll do the picture, and then we'll go to break, and then we'll stay back, Team Romantico, to to do a picture for all the hundred team. Team Romantico. And then uh, everybody, if you guys can line up against the wall, hey, somebody, hey, help raise your hand if you're a leader. 